for making the recommendation to hold off on our shift to hybrid. I just want to give you some numbers so that you understand where our data is coming from. Uh, that we're seeing a trend in upward, upward cases in Webster and everywhere. Um, in the last weekend, there were 27 new cases um, in Webster. Um, in the way that they figure out the metrics is a 14-day average. So we will be in the red in two weeks. Um, and we will be in the red until October 22nd. DESE and um, the Department of Health have recommended that uh, school districts not shift models without three solid weeks of data in front of them. Uh, I do want to let you know that the shift to hybrid, we've been working diligently towards, but it is um, very, very, very complex. Um, it includes looking at data, it includes looking at um, cohorts, and parents shifting cohorts. It includes, um, you know, staffing models. How are we going to staff um, and make that shift? And you know, food distribution models, and also teaching. Um, I want to give a shout out to our teachers across the district. Uh, we are in definitely, and everybody says it, unprecedented times. These are really unprecedented times. Our teachers uh, and our parents alike at home are being challenged with uh, trying to support kids um, with learning in through computer and virtual settings. Um, it's challenging. Uh, our, we are doing the very best we can and I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. But being in a remote model is very different than being in a hybrid model. Um, so, as you know, our remote model has just our cohort C students in school. So there are small numbers of actual students in school, while the majority of our students are learning remotely. Um, the shift that our teachers are being asked to make right now is shifting how they're going to communicate with kids in front of them and how are they going to communicate with kids um, through the computers uh, simultaneously. Um, to support our teachers with technology. We've done a tremendous amount of training. We will continue to do that. And recently, I do want to let you know that we have posted for some tech support, two tech support staff at each building to run sessions um, with helping our teachers manage our new tools, our new resources, um, so that they can be prepared for the shift. Um, so I'm kind of veering off a little bit, but I, I want to just stress that it's um, the shift to hybrid isn't as an easy, let's just shift to hybrid. It's very, very, very complex. Um, and having stated previously that we would come back to the school committee um, with a recommendation um, and our, our recommendation is to hold off moving to hybrid um, because of the trending upward numbers. I think it's important to know that the Board of um, Health Director is not able to be at the meeting tonight, but has stressed that this is not just one cluster um, in Webster. It's sort of spread throughout the town. Um, and uh, it is not her recommendation to move into a hybrid model with the numbers trending upward. And um, the, myself and the COVID leadership team um, agree. So we're bringing that to the school committee tonight. Um, I would say that um, our hope, and I think everyone's hope, would be to go back to normal and get our kids back into school, and everybody wants that. Um, but as you uh, know, safety is going to continue to guide the decisions that we make um, and the steps that we make. Um, we want to minimize risk, and we believe delaying the hybrid uh, model at this point in time, with Webster being in the red, is um, the recommendation before the school committee. I, I would say that we would like to um, reassess. As I had said, we'd be in the red until October 22nd. That could be extended if there are more cases. Um, we would like to have three weeks of data of being in the green or the yellow before we shift. Um, so we could come back and certainly we have a meeting um, before November 10th, which I think we need to discuss sports at, but um, we would come back on November 10th with 
um, having a better un understanding of our data, of if we're still in the red or if we've moved to the green or the yellow. Before I proceed, I'm happy to answer any questions on that. From the committee. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Uh, through the chair, do we need do we need to vote on this again? You certainly could to support the decision. Um, we had stated, uh, you know, I wasn't at the September twenty second meeting, but I had put together the packet um, that this is what we would do, and we feel like we're sticking to our plan with looking at the data. I think this is the most uncomfortable thing about COVID. Is is things shift, um, and every minute something changes. Um, uh, I, I would I would ask that you do support that um, recommendation. Um, I need to communicate that not only to my staff across the district but to my families um, for planning purposes. Through the chair, just a quick question. Do we know if uh, any students have tested positive? I mean, I know there's HIPAA involved, but without getting the specific individuals, do we know if it's just adults or if there are students that have tested positive in that group? Yeah, I, I, I can't get into specifics, um, Nick, but uh, what I can say is that um, the, um, there, have been, there have been younger children getting this in Webster, um, and that's all I can say, but none have been in our school. Like we have kids in cohort A or cohort B. Um, right now it's only cohort C in the school. So um, people have been in close contact. Um, we're keeping a very, very close watch on that close contact. I do want to um, give a shout out to our school nurses and Monique and um, we, are in constant communication. And when I mean constant communication, I mean even throughout the weekends with following the cases in Webster and then doing a um, contact tracing to ensure that we are minimizing the risk in our schools. Um, so we are tracking that. I can't go into the details of um, anything else because I don't want to um, violate any HIPAA. So yes. And I think we have to be careful. And I think you've seen the news. Um, you know, ki kids are um, kids are kids and they're out and about and with increased um, gatherings, there are increased a number of schools that are uh, moving from hybrid to remote because of either there was a party and an outbreak. Um, so we're trying to keep it calm in our schools to protect everybody. Are there any further questions or comments? I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, and I know this is not what everybody, um, well, not what some people wanted to hear, and we understand um, the difficulty with changing school models but I think it's in the best interest of everyone's safety to wait until we're out of the red for at least three weeks. Dr. Gorgon, would you like a vote on that now? Uh, that would be great. Um, so I think the, I would entertain a motion um, to support the superintendent's plan to delay opening in hybrid mode until the um, town of Webster has been out of red for a period of three weeks. So moved. There's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. I, I just want to, um, I don't want to dwell on it, but I do want to state that um, the schools have been very busy in the remote model and we're, we are seeing an increase of student and staff absences um, 
as we get further into the fall. And one of my concerns that I just want to put out there is that um, when we move to hybrid, my concerns will be staffing um, and what we will do if um, when kids come to school and we have, for example, 42 people out across the district, which has happened. Um, so in this t COVID era, um, people are being more cautious. They are being told to stay home and get, getting tested. And that plays into um, the support that we have for kids in schools. So I think that there, that needs to be mentioned because at some point we're going to have to have um, some sort of emergency planning around uh, when we're in hybrid and we don't have enough staffing out of the schools. So I just want to put that out there so it's not a surprise. Um, and then, um, yep. Pardon me, my name is Steve Negrotti. I'm new to all this, so if I'm doing something wrong, I greatly apologize. Um, my question, I understand why we're doing it, and I don't uh, disagree or agree. I was just curious to Dudley. They've been back, I believe. I just don't understand why one town would and we wouldn't. Through the chair. Yes, Dr. Gogan. I, I, I know we're not supposed to answer questions like this at a school right. meeting, um, but I just will say that I can't speak for Dudley um, and what part of our plan um, is to abide by the safety regulations and the Board of Health Director's guidance. Um, I do have a full team of people that meet weekly <laughs> to analyze data, and this full team has made that recommendation um, based on the data that we have. And one of the challenges I, I understand for parents is that every town's doing something different. It's also a challenge for superintendents across the state. There hasn't been a unified approach to this. So um, I hope I answered your question. You did, I'm very sorry. I didn't know I couldn't ask questions, my bad. It's okay. So there are a number of people joining us this evening and I'm very thankful um, for the number of people that are taking an interest in our meetings. Um, and just in the way of relaying some of the protocols, typically um, th these are open meetings, which means that the public should have full access to the del deliberations that go on during a public meeting. However, the, the questions and comments are typically limited only to committee members and um, those members of the staff that are presenting. So I do appreciate your, your question though, Mr. Nugardi. And I'm happy to have a conversation with you tomorrow if you want to give me a call. Um, at, I just want to talk a little bit about sports. Um, we had the committee had met today and because we in, are in the red, um, the original data had come out that stated when you are in the red, you should stop sports. But then new data came out that said you again need three weeks of uh, a metrics. So um, the committee was a little split today, but they recommended that we um, leave sports the way they are. Um, next week will be our third week in red and that we will regroup on Tuesday and then bring more information to you at the next meeting. Um, we, I do want you to know that there are practices of being um, followed very strictly with the safety guidelines. There are only 50 students involved in, athlete, in the athletic programs right now um, and so the committee has recommended that we um, hold off until next week before we make um, any possible adjustments to the sport. Okay, any other questions before I move on from the committee on that? Okay. We've through been the chair. Sorry, through the chair. Um, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I know we have a small number of students, 50 students, that are participating in sports, but that is not all that's there. Those two, we have to consider those 50 students, their families, and all the people they come in contact with. It's not just 50 students playing sports. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. 
Are there any other comments or questions from the committee? Okay, Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Under my other updates, I wanted to just let you know that um, uh, we had our October 9th Professional Development Day, uh, Half Day of PD. Uh, I want to give a shout out to um, Mrs. Jill Chapdelaine once again for organizing a very well structured um, half day uh, in, in such a. In, in, she's been great with planning. I think she's even on this meeting. Uh, our ESL teachers were participating in um, learning how to deliver strategies in a remote and a hybrid setting with Dr. Um, Rojas. Our nurses participated in a Northeastern University Health Academy. We had Nicole Foy back to work with our teachers on um, practice tools and strategies for de-stressing and boosting learning. Uh, there was a deep dive on preparing for iReady assessments and training for how to do iReady assessments at home. So it was a very full um, PD day. Um, do wanna let you know that I received an answer to Freedom of Information Act on the district's dyslexia um, screening and procedures. I'm pleased to let you know that we received an early grades literacy grant from DESE that Mrs. Janice Daniels wrote. Um, in my notes to you, the amount was uh, $56,000. It has been decreased since that to $49,000. Um, but this grant um, will support training and support for the early literacy grades. Um, and they will provide us a consultant. Uh, Ms. Melissa Rice will be working with Principal Parmley and her K-3 to teachers. I'm not going to talk too much. I think Mrs. Parmley might um, be sharing a little bit more information about that in her report tonight. I do also want to let you know that Principal Thomas has applied for the Innovative Pathways Planning Grant. This is really great news. I think perfect timing with the Bartlett High School project underway. The Mass Hire Central Regional Workforce um, is pleased to partner with us, um, focusing on advanced manufacturing and healthcare and social assistance programming. This is really nice time as we are starting to really fine tune our um, educational plan for our, the building project. Want to give a shout out to Dr. Mackay who ran another new teacher orientation um, for the staff that were hired after August 26. Our te these teachers re will receive their ALICE training from um, our SRO, um, Tim Whiting, later this week. Our district leadership team also met on October 1st, um, as previously shared our fire drills and were held the first week of school. We anticipate um, more drills coming. Um, I also wanna give another shout out to our Park Avenue ELL teachers and Dr. Mackay. They held an ELL parent informational event um, virtually on October 1st, which was well attended. I believe they're looking at that doing that for the Webster Middle School and Bartlett High School. We have received some information that MCAS will happen a little differently. It will happen this year, according to the Commissioner of Education, uh, but it will happen a little differently. Uh, the Bartlett High School ELA and math will be in January with the legacy testing for grades 11 and 12. The Bartlett High School ELA and math will be in May with the next generation test for grades 10 and their window will be um, May 18th through the 27th. The Bartlett High School biology test will be happen in the window of February 8th through the 26th, and that will be the old legacy test for grades nine. And the MCAS alt um, will be due on April 1st. And access testing for our ELLs will be administered and there's an expanded window this year from January to February. And I'm pleased to announce that we just received the John and Abigail scholarship notification letters to the students and they will be receiving those shortly. We've been trying to do the normal things with um, programming and expanding our programming. And one exciting program that we've brought into the high school this year is called the One Goal Program. It's being offered over at the high school. 
Uh, this is a program that really focuses in, on low-income first-generation potential college students, and it follows students for three years. Um, they help students with the whole process, and it's a very structured curriculum. Students are enrolled, and um, I'm working with MAFRE on a grant for the fee for the, each year, it's $7,500. Um, we're hoping to um, receive that grant. If not, we do have that in our LEA budget. And uh, at this point, I believe there are 14 students enrolled in this um, wonderful program. We are also um, following up. Am I going too fast? Okay. I, we have also followed up on the agreement that we have with the district attorney's office. Um, last year, we signed an agreement with the Sandy Hook Promise program. Uh, this year, uh, we of course had to stop when we went remote in March. Um, this year, we're posting for Save Promise Club Advisors, and we are going to be starting with a couple different programming that the district attorney's um, office will be bringing in through Sandy Hook and they will be virtual. Um, these, this program is designed to empower students with a voice and help um, promote a safe environment uh, and really student-led student -led ideas. Uh, the Start With Hello Promise programs are, uh, we are looking for two advisors, one at the middle school and one at the high school. There'll be a stipend for that. They'll be working with kids and signing up for this um, national program. And then they come in and they do a program that calls, is called Start With Hello. It's a 40-minute uh, virtual assembly for grades six through eight. And uh, we're looking at doing that sometime in October at the middle school. Uh, and then we're also looking to do that at the high school um, at the end of um, October and in November. And then finally, they come in and they do a signs of suicide training for specifically identified staff, counselors, health teachers, school nurses, school psychologists, the SRO, and administrators. And um, they provide some training. And then that team will come back and train staff at their staff meeting on uh, signs of suicide. Uh, this is a great program. And I'm pleased that we're taking action this year. And we have our fingers crossed that that will happen. Um, do want to let you know that we are in the process of putting together a COVID sick bank for all employees. And I also want to let you know that the Board of Health is working on a free flu clinic for uh, community members and staff students. On, uh, it will be held at Bartlett High School on October 24th from 10 to noon. Um, as you may or may not remember, there are new requirements where um, students need to get the flu shot by December, by the end of December. And I'm almost done. Um, we have put out our district benchmark assessment uh, calendar. Our first benchmarks will be using our iReady assessments for ELA on October 26th through 29th across the district. And for math, uh, November 2nd through 5th for, I'm sorry, for math. And the first one was for ELA. And as I mentioned briefly before, we are using some of our COVID relief to provide a stipend for two tech savvy staff members at each building to provide um, after school support um, for staff in the buildings, recognizing that technology um, continually amazes us all and stops us in our tracks at some points. Um, and so we're hoping that those extra additional supports will help our teachers. Um, and finally, um, the Webster Middle School and Bartlett High School TAD grants have been um, revised and written and will be submitted this Thursday. We've been working with the SSOS team and this is Dr. Mackay has uh, taken the lead and um, we um, hope that um, things continue to proceed in the direction and we receive the TAG grants. And that concludes my report. And I'm happy to answer any questions from the committee. I know it was long. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair. I just Ms. have yep. some 
some comments and maybe one question. First, whenever I see the PD list that you put out, it's always so impressive. And it just, you know, that's the reason why there's been such change in Webster is that level of um, support and instruction that's been provided so consistently to the staff. It really is great to see. It's impressive. Um, also, I am so pleased that Mr. Thomas is pursuing the Innovations Pathway Grant. It is a great program. Is that, that would be in effect for next year? There's a whole process to it. You get the you get the planning grant first, and then you get the um, you have to apply again for the innovative placement designation, and then you get the capital skills grant. And I think Mr. Thomas is on if um, if I incorrectly stated that. So it's a very detailed process. Um, but I think once you're in, um, you do get the support, and 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 I, their timing could not be better with um, the design of Bartlett High School. Right, right. So, but students wouldn't be able to participate until next year? Or I, I think, af even after that? I, I don't know. Okay. I, 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 I don't think it's going to come off the ground that quickly, but um, I could be incorrect. So I will, I will follow up with you on that. Okay. Um, the other thing, and I, I think that we'll probably talk more about this in the next couple of months, is the MCAS schedule. Um, you know, just really uh, personally, I'm just wondering, will 11th graders have an option of not taking it in January, but taking it in May? I don't know. Okay. I don't Dr. know. Gogan, I, could, I could answer both those if you'd like me to. Perfect. Yeah, I would love for you to. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, Member Naparada, the innovation pathways uh, process is a multi-step process, but the planning grant in the uh, designation, if we achieve both of those, would be for a launch next fall. Okay, so the planning grant will help fund um, opportunities for us to explore partnerships with external uh, manufacturing and healthcare <laughs> individuals uh, thus far. I have a meeting Thursday with um, ISG Photonics. I have the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, so we're, we're in pretty good shape there. Um, the MCAS, what the state has said is they will not, students from the class of 2021 and 2022 will not be able to achieve competency determination without passing MCAS. Mm -hmm. So there will be two uh, administrations this year, January and May. Okay. So students can take January and May. They can opt to only take May if they're really confident, but it it's, would probably behoove them, to, especially if they are seniors, uh, to take it in January and then again in May. Mm -hmm. Right, I just, um, you know, knowing the that there is the difference between the two administration where one is legacy and one is next one is generation. Next Yes. And, and Desi actually did a nice job of um, laying out that information on their website. So, um, and I just looked into it for for my daughter, and I think that she would prefer the May administration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're we're going to check. Obviously, we, in in some of those cases, students are no longer in a biology class, and you know we're going to have to look at um, some of the freshmen who are in biology now. Should they take it now, or should they wait? I mean, it's it's almost going to be an individual uh, case in some instances. I think we're fortunate that we're a small school. And we should be able to meet with each of those kids and, and decide what okay. path they should take. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Fran. That was it. Are there any other questions or comments from the committee? Kathy, did you have something else? Hearing no other comments or questions, the next item on the, Dr. Gogan, does that conclude your report? Yes, it does. Thank you. So, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the business manager's report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangeli. Good evening, Chairman Sadecki. Thank you. It's great to see so many people on tonight. We're getting to the exciting part of the agenda now that we've got through all of the superintendent's report. Um, <laughs> just teasing Dr. Gogan. 
Uh, first item on my agenda is the school building committee update. Uh, we met as a building committee on October 7th. Uh, we are starting to move through the process, um, getting towards the designer selection. So where we're at now is on October 2nd, we had an informational walkthrough at the high school. That allowed designers and architects and maybe engineers to come in and take a walk through the building and check out the condition of the building. Um, they were then allowed to send in questions. There's a Q&A period that they send to our OPM who will answer questions. Some of those have come in. And then they have until October 29th to send in RFS, which is a request for service. Um, this will go to the designer selection panel um, at the MSBA, where we will have three finalists and from there they can conduct interviews and rank and um, we will have an architect. So we are hoping, we are on schedule. We are hoping to go to the November 17th designer selection panel meeting and we are hoping to have a contract executed by December 11th of 2020 to have an architect. And that's when they'll come in and really start, that's when the planning really begins, where they'll bring in educational consultants, we'll be looking at everything in the building, do a needs assessment, and start really looking um, at the project going forward uh, long term. Um, does anybody have any questions with that? No? Okay. I have a little something further on in the agenda with uh, about the designer selection panel, but I won't, I'll go into that then. Um, the second and third item I'm going to do together, we have boiler project update and tennis court update. Um, I'm going to add a little excitement to this meeting and I'm going to share my screen and show you a couple pictures um, because you got to see it to believe it. So can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. I hope? Yes. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, there we go. All right, so I, I've got a couple before and after pictures. So if you can see right here, you see the corrosion. These are some of the valves. Um, not everything is fixed yet because it wasn't all part of the project, but you can see the before pictures. This is our remaining boiler. Um, if you can see the corrosion in, underneath, um, the one that was replaced looked a little worse than this, but not too bad. And then this is our newest model. Um, you can see at the top, they, all that white and red is all new piping that they installed. And this little gray box here, um, we'd need five of them, that is the boiler that would be replacing um, our, our larger units down the road. So we would need five of these in total. So phase one is just about done. Um, they'll, they've got it all full, was inspections I believe came in today. So it's ready to get going and turned on. Um, once this project's complete, I've already talked to the town administrator, uh, cause we're not just banking on a building project because as we know, that'll be three or four years out. Uh, we are anticipating, um, you know, not not crossing our fingers and waiting for that other boiler to maintain and running because as it is, we've already had to do some repairs on that boiler. So if I can get um, additional grant funding from the green communities, uh, we will pursue that avenue to see if we can replace the other boiler and um, run the building a lot more efficiently. And then the second project we had going on was our tennis courts. This isn't really a great picture, but if you had seen our courts before, um, they were all cracked. Uh, the poles were wobbly. Um, it really, this picture doesn't do it any justice. It was a little wet today, but everything has been filled in and covered. They've painted, the poles have been uh, redone. So we're really excited about the projects and appreciate the community support because um, it really is making a difference for our building. So we appreciate that. And I just wanted to give you an update on that and um, you know, thank the community and the town administrator uh, for working with us on getting those projects done. Any questions? 
through the chair. Ms. Neferata. Are there going to be nets on the courts this fall? Yes, there are. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, we are also painting one of the courts um, pickleball. We're also painting some pickleball. We have a group of people that like to go up there and they've asked to, uh, over the summer, they were taping up the courts and taping off a special court. So we allowed one of the courts in the back side, and we're gonna paint that for them, for the community. And um, we've gotta let this cure for about three weeks, I think, three or four weeks. But if we can get the nets back up, we absolutely will. So the community can play, hopefully before we get some snow on the ground. Thank you. Any more questions? No? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the transportation update. Uh, we are still maintaining and keeping a close eye on transportation. Um, we've had a lot of movement as we've um, been in discussion with returning to hybrid. Some people changing their minds, saying they might want to come back um, from remote. So there's been a lot of activity back and forth um, with movement of students. So. Um, we are still in okay shape. I know I've had a couple of calls for people to, for me to post um, bus routes and have um, up-to-date current bus routes. I'm reluctant to do that right away just because I want to put the most accurate information out there. I don't want to put up bus routes and then have to have them change because of overcrowding on a bus. I'm taking roads and changing. We're sending bus passes home. Um, so I'm trying to, some, we have a couple buses that are pretty borderline full. Um, one kid can top it off for us and then I'd have to readjust the routes. So um, my intention was as we were getting close, I was going to put them up this week, but now we've postponed that. So I'm going to hold off just a little bit, but I think I should have a, a really uh, good idea within a couple of weeks of what the routes are going to look like. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving parents good information. I don't want to put something out there that's going to change. That's my fear. So that's why I'm waiting till I'm pretty sure that it's, it's going to be accurate for them. Um, any questions? No? Okay. Uh, next item is the end of year report. So I've started working on the end of year report. Uh, we had uh, everybody in the state got extended to October 16th or 17th, whatever this Friday is, um, for submittal. Uh, I have a final end of year budget report that I printed out. As I told the committee, I would be bringing that final report to them. Um, so you'll have a copy of that in the, in the end of year budget. It appears right now that we have about $112,000 in surplus that will be returning to the town. Um, and I will make sure you have copies of all of that. Some of the funds have been transferred to the town for the CARES fund reimbursement, um, which is offsetting, which is why you see that surplus. So I hope to have the report done by this Friday and submitted, and if not, it'll be shortly after that, but I am currently working on that. And then in other updates, uh, just a couple of things. Um, technology, as I stated last meeting, we had a lot of technology coming in all at once. Um, and we've been doing our best to turn that around and get that out. Uh, as you know, we have a, a big tech department of three people. Um, we have John, uh, Frank, and Deb uh, who work in the tech department. And they have really been hustling and putting in a lot of work to turn things around for us and get it out and support the staff uh, the best that they can. And I, I think they deserve a huge shout out for that. Um, I thank them for the hard work um, and turning that around. I also want to give a shout out to Jill and to Dan Kelly, um, who also were working nights and weekends to help get the laptops out to the staff and to the teacher's hands. Um, everybody's been kind of pitching in and doing things that are not necessarily in their, in their job. Um, purview and it's really made a difference in help and I appreciate the team effort from everybody um, in getting that done. So thank you. The staff have been um, awesome. They had a lot of technology given to them all at once and they're still working their way through it, um, but they're really stepping up to the plate and doing a fantastic job. I know it's not easy and you know, 
what what might seem easy to me technology wise might not be easy for somebody else you know we all have our own different skill set to get used to and and i acknowledge that and i see that and i see the collaboration between staff between teachers between um just working together and sharing ideas and trying to figure out best practices because we're all learning. This is not something that, um, you know, we were, we were really prepared for as far as training and, you know, having rooms set up and coming into practice. So they've done a fantastic job with all of that. And I, I just want to give everybody a shout out, the staff, the technology, the administrators, the people who are coming in on weekends to work and get things done. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to our custodial staff who are working really hard to keep our buildings clean and safe and spraying. Um, although we are not full hybrid yet, we still have students in the building um, on a daily basis, Monday through Thursday. So, and we have staff and they're doing what they need to to make sure that um, we're ma maintaining the safety integ and, and integrity in the building. So I thank them for that. And then the last update I want to give um, is for food service. As we've been working through all these models, we've also uh, had discussions um, with food service director Ellen Nylon, who's on the call tonight. So if we have questions, now's the time. Um, but how to best serve our community and our families? Uh, we've we've been listening to our parents. It's not always um, easy for parents to get there during the day to pick up lunches on the day that they're home. There's a shorter window. Um, it's harder for them to get there. So we've been trying to figure out ways to um, do more bulk mail, which we were planning on starting next week. Uh, we were waiting to find out what scenario we were gonna do. But our hope is to send home um, Meals that would get, our, our original plan was to send home, if we're in hybrid, we would send home three meals of plants, seeing the students would be in two days, they'd have three meals. And then they could also pick up lunches on Friday, pick up meals to have meals for the weekend. So it would be a Monday, Friday. Um, so next week, we're gonna have to do a few pickups. We'll do a Monday pickup that we can give out batches of mail, and then we'll probably have to do, cause that'll get them for three days. So then we'll have to do another one midweek and then we could do a pickup on Friday. And we're gonna send home a one call and we're gonna put this notice all out there on Facebook for everybody and Twitter. Um, but we're looking at next week, a Monday and a Thursday distribution. And then starting with a five meal, cause we're a full remote, um, except for our C kids, we'll be sending home five meals a week. So Monday they can come, they'll have meals for the week and then they can pick up again on Friday and have meals for the weekend. And hopefully that'll help parents where they're only coming out of the house one day versus coming out of the house three or four days for lunches during the day. Um, those meals uh, will consist of, um, they can come, they'll come with like a quart of milk or if they're home for five days, maybe a gallon of milk, um, some, uh, white milk, they could have frozen pizza, peanut butter and jelly, things that you can refrigerate. They'll come with Cheerios, breakfast muffins, apples, oranges, juice, veggies, carrots. Um, all of this will be in bulk for parents to take home. And um, Ellen, if I'm forgetting anything, please jump on and correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, she has been doing, Ellen uh, Nyland has been doing a fantastic job and her staff have been doing a fantastic job trying to make sure that we're, we're serving and meeting the needs of the community um, on the food side of things. Uh, so if anybody has any questions or Ellen, if I've missed anything, uh, please jump in. Are there any questions or comments from the committee regarding Mrs. Brinsley's report? Through the chair? Yes, Mrs. Nicaragua. The meals have been fantastic. Um, we are definitely taking advantage of that service. Um, and the kids are enjoying the school lunches, which you know has taken a while for them to get to that point. So will there be daily pickups moving forward or just the Monday? pickup and the Thursday or Friday pickup? 
it'll just be Monday pickup. So for next week, it'll be Monday and Thursday because we'll be sending three meals home. Um, and then after that, it'll be a weekly, like a Monday, Friday. So you'll have Monday for the five days and then the weekend meals. That's great. You know, it, it definitely had crossed my mind, you know, as either I was driving to the school to get the lunches or my husband was going to the school thinking about those families that weren't able to do that, whether they were working or they couldn't leave their children home alone. Um, so I, I'm definitely happy to hear that, that's, that there'll be a solution. So thank you and great job, Ellen. Yeah, on behalf of the committee, I would just like to add that um, there's a lot of things that we do really well in Webster, and some of them have been highlighted with the professional development and how hard the teachers and, and the staff are working, but I think we always do a good job of feeding our kids, too. So a big thank you to the whole team. Thank I just you. have two words. Webster pride. I think during this COVID crisis, um, there's one thing that has occurred and it's everyone rolling up their sleeves to problem solve and figure out um, the best solution and our entire school community has um, put their best foot forward and we're very lucky and a, a huge thank you goes out to everyone. Mrs. Perangeli, is there anything left of your report? Was that all of it? That's everything. That's everything. Okay. Thank you. That was a great report. Does anyone else have anything that they wanted to ask about Mrs. Pringley's report before we move on? Okay. So the next item on the agenda is the principal's report. And joining us this evening from Park Avenue Elementary School is Mrs. Parmley. Good evening, Mrs. Parmley. Good evening, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. So we have been super busy at Park Avenue and we kicked off this year on September 3rd and September 9th with our virtual information nights. So Mrs. Zablocki and Mrs. Phillips and I were able to host information nights for different sessions for our pre-K up to grade four parents. And we felt like those were very successful. We were able to go over the safety protocols, what virtual learning looks like, what our typical learning day looks like and expectations and then we're able to have a Q&A time. And then on September 17th, we had a virtual open house where we went over some key information that included what we had also done at on the information nights. But then the families were able to go into their teachers' classrooms and all of our grade level teams worked incredibly hard and had a virtual open house ready for families to come in, take a look at the classrooms, learn all about what that grade expectations, what those were all about, and to be able to meet their teachers and to also have a Q&A. So again, our, our staff did a phenomenal job. There was a lot of planning and prep and they just really did um, such a tremendous job on that. And then I believe all of these presentations are now available um, on our Park Avenue site. And then, um, let me see here, I don't remember the dates, but we had two Carline events in which we were, we were able to get devices into the hands of all of our kindergarten through grade four students. So we were so excited to do that. And also our grade level teams made learning packets and worked incredibly hard trying to decide what kind of activities would support instruction and the curriculum that's going on in the classroom as well. And I know Mrs. Um, Gogan mentioned the literacy grant. I won't say too much about that tonight, Mrs. Gogan, because I hadn't planned to. However, I am excited that we did receive that. We have two teaching teams that will be part of implementing that at Park Avenue. And I am meeting with our consultant, Melissa Rice, this week. So I will have lots of new information for you the next time we meet. And then I want it to end tonight. I had put down on the agenda, Park Avenue virtual superheroes. And during the closure, um, Dr. Mackay and Mrs. Ablocki and I had bought t-shirts for our staff and it had a polar bear on the front and it said even a pandemic can't hold a polar bear down and on the that on the back it said virtual superheroes and i want to speak to that for just a moment our staff have been doing what no other staff has done in history as you know that all the teachers across the nation but i want to be able to give a huge shout out to my staff our teachers have worked phenomenally hard they are 
digging deep using technology that's never, you know, in capacities they've never had to do before. They are providing creative activities for our families. They're, they are making themselves available on Class Dojo and to families just around the clock. I've asked them to put a little bit of boundaries up there so they can rest and have time for their own families. But I just want to tell you, our staff, bar none, have worked just phenomenally hard since the day we started. They started in the closure and it's just continued. So I do want to tell you that in my estimation, they truly are our virtual superheroes at Park Avenue School. So great job. Great job, Park Ave. And I think that's it. Any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Parmley. As a mom of two students at Park Avenue, I can attest to how hard the teachers are working and whether it's Unified Arts and the kids doing their jumping jacks in the living room or um, building their tower out of index cards with Ms. Jeffers today. They're certainly getting um, lots of academic and physical activity. So um, really appreciate all the work that's gone into pulling off this year. And I'm sure the same is true of the middle school and the high school as well, although I'm not seeing it firsthand as yet. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all your updates. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the student representative update. Good evening, Vivian. Good evening. So I do have a pretty short report tonight just because most activities are still on hold. But for academics, a class-wide Zoom meeting was held for each grade level um, on September 25th to answer any questions about remote learning and what we're gonna be doing going forward. And a college application informational Zoom meeting was held on October 2nd. That just went over how to use Common App and things like that to help seniors. And seniors have begun meeting with guidance counselors to discuss their plans after graduation. One month into remote learning, students have definitely begun feeling burnt out and it's taken a toll on everyone's mental health. And we're definitely looking forward to going back in person. For athletics, as it was touched on before, the fall sports season began on Monday, October 5th, and students have been doing a good job following the social distancing guidelines and the mask protocols. And for events, there was a parent open house held on September 24th via Zoom. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Vivian. Are there any questions or comments for Vivian from the committee? Vivian, I would just like to acknowledge, you know, I, I just was sharing with rose colored glasses how the remote learning is going for my six and nine year old. I know it's probably very different um, when you get to um, an age where you have a social life and, and friends and um, there's a certain feeling of, of missing something that my kids are not experiencing yet simply because they don't really know what they're missing. So just want to acknowledge that it's, the experience is very different depending on you know, the age of the student and in your individual circumstances. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. If there's no further discussion about that, the next item on the agenda under old business is the approval of the memorandum of agreement with the Webster uh, Instructional Assistance. Dr. Gogan, is this you? Yes, it is. Um, as you know, we were in involved in negotiations with our teachers and also our paraprofessionals. Um, we did that simultaneously. Um, the um, paraprofessional memorandum of understanding is quite similar to um, the teacher's memorandum of understanding, listing all of the safety requirements that we would be following. Um, but it does go into some detail with regards to um, reduction in hours and the shifts from remote to hybrid. Uh, the um, Webster Paraprofessionals Association has approved this memorandum of understanding and it is before you tonight um, for approval and signature. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Webster, or excuse me, the Instructional Assistance and the Webster School Committee. Is it the Webster School Committee, sorry, or the district? It's the um, 
Webster Public Schools, and the Webster Paraprofessional Association. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the, the MOA between the Webster Paraprofessionals Association and the Webster Public Schools. So moved. Thank second. you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparato? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes. The next item on the agenda uh, under new business is the approval of surplus items, Webster Middle School outdated items. Mr. Bogan or Mrs. Perangeli? Not sure. Mrs. Perangeli. Share. Tag, you're it, right? You uh, it. So we have some items that are surplus from the Webster Middle School, some outdated textbooks and stuff. And we are looking for you to declare them surplus and I will dispose of in accordance with chapter 30B. Thank you, Mrs. Perangeli. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to declare the attached list of items as obsolete and to direct the business manager to auction off, donate, or otherwise recycle or dispose of these materials in conjunction with the provisions of Mass General Law 30B. So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparata? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui. Yes. The motion passes. Next up is the designation of a school committee designee for the designer selection panel for the Bartlett High School building project. So Mrs. Perangeli has the full details, but we are asking for the school committee to um, um, select a designee for the selection committee. Uh, we are allowed to have three members from Webster on the larger committee for the M from the MSBA to select the designers. And uh, the way that it's outlined is it's the superintendent or uh, the or designee, the school committee or designee, and one representative from the school committee building um, committee. Um, Mr. Ted Avalis was selected at the last school committee building meeting. And um, we're asking the school committee um, to uh, select a designee. My recommendation would be uh, Monique Perangeli um, to serve on that. And the three of us would represent Webster. Uh, we would also be meeting with a subcommittee of the school committee building committee um, to go over applicants prior to going to the MSBA meetings, uh, two of them in November um, for the final selection. And I'm sure that Mrs. Perangeli can add some more details to that. Sure, thank you. So as I said earlier in the meeting that we will be heading to designer selection panel um, to vote in an architect for our district for the project. Uh, the way that works is the designer selection panel is made up of 13 appointed individuals and then three from the community. As Dr. Gogan said, it's the superintendent, the school committee designee, and a building committee designee. Um, as you know, we went through this back in um, 2015, or pre previously to that actually, it was probably more like 2012 um, for Park Ave. At that point, it was the superintendent who went in, the building committee chair, and Mr. Avlis was the school committee's representative, I believe, on that. So um, it is customary for that to happen. Um, our job will be going in. We have three votes to assess the, um, the um, RFS that come in and work with the panel and to kind of plead our case. If, if we really um, are looking for a certain architect or just you know a certain pick to have our voices heard, um, as part of that designer selection panel. Thank you, Mrs. Perangeli. Um, is there a motion to designate Mrs. Perangeli as the um, school committee designee for the designer selection panel? So moved. 
Second. There's a motion, I think, in two seconds. Lori, <laughs> would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the approval of a job description for the family liaison position. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. This is an updated um, job description. Um, as you know, we had for a short time a family liaison in the district in a part-time capacity. Um, that person then moved over to um, UINC as a family liaison, so we no longer needed to fund it. We still have access to that person, but not on a full-time basis. This job description is a little different in that we're um, hoping to use some of our COVID relief funds over the next year to hire a bilingual uh, family school liaison to assist us with the most important work of keeping those family connections with students and families that are in need of some extra additional support. We do feel this person um, needs to be bilingual and the job description in front of you um, kind of outlines some of our visionary goals for this new position. They would be working uh, in close communication with our school counselors, our administrators, our families and students, um, you know, helping with that communication, making sure that students um, are attending and able to attend and have equal access to what we're providing them, regardless of our school model. So um, we're looking for you to approve this um, job description and um, us hiring someone with the additional funds that we will be receiving to add that extra layer of support that we feel is necessary um, during these during this crisis. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee about this uh, new job description? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the job description as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Yeah. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And the final item on the agenda is the review, transfer, signing of warrants, bills, payrolls, and vouchers. Um, do any members of the committee have questions regarding the warrant? Nope. So Mo, I'm sure you need your standard parade of designees this week. <laughs> we yes. know who we are. <laughs> If so you could I come in that, tomorrow, I would appreciate it. Uh, the town gets anxious to send out the checks. They kind of hold them for us um, until we get the signatures. So if, if tomorrow works, that would be wonderful. And I think that's, that's you, Linda, right? Yes. <laughs> that's fine. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. So having uh, gone through our whole agenda, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you call the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Have a good Thank night, you. everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Take care. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.